noise figure of mismatched Lucy line. In the previous video, we have studied how to calculate the noise figure for uh, a Lucy two board network. Uh, as an example for a Lucy two board network, we are going to discuss a simple Lucy transmission line. So assume that we have a loss transmission line with loss factor L and temperature T and characteristic impedance Z0 and wave propagation constant theta and its length is L and this transmission line section uh, at the port 1 is terminated by a source with a characteristic impedance ZG and as a general case the value of ZG does not equal the value of Z0 so this mismatch it so we have reflection coefficient gamma s and we have reflection coefficient gamma input on the other hand uh, the second board uh, the second board is terminated by uh, a matched impedance Z0 so gamma L is 0 and this match load uh, to assure that the maximum power is delivered from this network to the uh, connected load. However, even so, the gamma L is zero, we still have gamma output at the two port network, as we have discussed in the previous video. So, in this case, uh, the transmission line of length L at temperature T and beta is a propagation constant. The corresponding uh, scattering matrix for such simple two-board network can be obtained as follows, assuming that uh, the two boards 1 and 2 are matched, so S11 and S22 are 0, and the power from 1 is transferred to port 2 and the power from 2 is transferred to port 1 but with an attenuation so the magnitude of S12 equals 1 over square root L where L is the power attenuation coefficient and as we know the scattering matrix or the scattering parameters represent the ratio of voltage so if you are talking about voltage, it would be a uh, square root of the power. So it would be 1 over square root L. In a similar way, uh, the power transmitted from port 2 to port 1 it would be S21. As a magnitude, it would be 1 over square root L. And as a phase, the phase shift between 1 and 2 is e to the power minus GVT. In a similar way, the phase from 2 to 1 is e to the power minus j beta. So, in this case, the reflection coefficient at the output port, gamma output, it would be given by S22 plus S11 multiplied by S21 multiplied by gamma s is the reflection coefficient at the source over 1 minus s11 multiplied by gamma s and the reflection coefficient at the source gamma s to be simply uh, the characteristic impedance of the source zg minus the characteristic impedance of the transmission line z0 over zg plus z0 so the reflection coefficient at the source gamma s is zg minus z0 or zg plus z0 and because zg does not equal z0 the value of gamma s is not zero so if we have gamma s we can calculate gamma output by taking gamma s here the value of s22 is zero s11 uh, sorry s12 multiplied by s21 uh, it would be 1 over L multiplied by E to the power minus 2 J beta L. Gamma S is the value of gamma S. 1 minus S11. S11 is 0. So this value is 0. 
So simply, the reflection coefficient at the output wall would be gamma s over L multiplied by e to the power minus g minus 2 g beta s. As a magnitude, it would be the magnitude of gamma s over the magnitude of L. This is gamma output. Now we have gamma source and gamma output, and we have the S parameters of the two both network. So we can obtain the available gain. As we have mentioned in the previous video, the available gain of this two board network with this source and with this load, it would be G21 equals the magnitude of S21 squared multiplied by 1 minus gamma source squared over 1 minus S11 multiplied by gamma S or of the S squared multiplied by 1 minus gamma out of squared. So the magnitude of S to 1 squared, it would be 1 over L, and should be noted here, it is the magnitude, so uh, E to the power minus G beta L, its magnitude is unity, so this would be 1 over L, multiplied by 1 minus gamma source squared, over 1 minus S11 multiplied by gamma S, S11 is 0, so this term is unity, over 1 minus gamma out. Gamma output would be the magnitude of gamma S squared over the magnitude of L squared because the magnitude of E to the power minus G beta L is unit. Okay. So from this, we can say that okay, S21 is 1 over L, S1 squared, multiplied by 1 minus gamma S squared over unity multiplied by 1 minus gamma output squared. Gamma output squared could be replaced by gamma source squared over L squared. And we are going to take this L in the denominator. So it would be simply uh, L squared. No, we are going to take the L squared in the denominator of the denominator to be in the denominator. So we have L squared in the numerator and L squared here. L squared minus gamma S squared. But here we are going L squared over L to be L. So the available gain G to 1 in this case would be simply uh, the attenuation coefficient L multiplied by 1 minus gamma source squared over L squared minus gamma source squared. Where gamma source is ZG minus Z naught over ZG plus Z naught. Now we have the available gain. From the available gain, we can obtain the equivalent the noise temperature of these two both network. As we said, uh, but before uh, taking uh, this point, let us study uh, the available gain. Uh, the available gain G21, as we have obtained, equals the attenuation coefficient L multiplied by 1 minus gamma S squared over L squared minus gamma S squared. So, if uh, the source is matched to the transmission line such that ZG equals Z naught, in this case, gamma source it would be zero. And in this case, the value of the available gain would be simply uh, L over L squared would be 1 over L. So if gamma source equals 0, the available uh, gain, the maximum available gain, it would be 1 over L. On the other hand, if the attenuation L is unity, it means that there is no attenuation. Yes. So if the value of L equal unity, this would be 1 minus gamma s squared over 1 minus gamma s squared. So the maximum available gain in this case, it would be simply unity. And in this case, uh, the power in board 1 is transmitted completely to board 2. So these are the two limits. One limit when the value of the transmission uh, coefficient is unity. So the maximum available gain would be unity. And the other limit. When the transmission line 
uh, is matched to the source, but there is still attenuation. So the maximum available gain it would be simply one over n. Now by using uh, the maximum available gain, uh, we can obtain the equivalent noise temperature. We said that the equivalent noise temperature Te for this two-hot network is simply one minus uh, G21 over G21 multiplied by the temperature, the physical temperature of this cell. And G21, as I said, is L multiplied by 1 minus gamma source squared over L squared minus gamma source squared. So we can replace G21 by what is the equivalent. So it would be 1 minus this value over this value. We can arrange it such that the value of the equivalent noise temperature it can be found as L minus 1 multiplied by L plus gamma source squared over L multiplied by 1 minus gamma source squared multiplied by uh, the temperature of the circuit. So this is the equivalent noise temperature for such lossy uh, transmission line which is mismatched with uh, the source. As limiting factor, if this lossy transmission line is matched to the source, means that the source has a characteristic luminance equal to Z naught, so gamma source would be zero. In this case, the equivalent noise temperature it would be L minus one multiplied by L because gamma source is zero over L, so L will be eliminated with L. So the remaining it would be L minus one multiplied by T. L minus one multiplied by T. So this is the equivalent noise temperature for a lossy transmission line connected to a matching load. Effectively, this is exactly the same value which we have obtained before uh, when we discussed lossy transmission line connected to a matching load. Uh, the other extreme, if the value of L is unity, if the attenuation coefficient is unity, so in this case, the value L minus 1 would be 0, so the equivalent noise temperature is it would be 0. This means that if there is no attenuation in the transmission line section, or in other words, if there is no attenuation in the passive 2 volt network, uh, the equivalent noise temperature it would be zero, or there will be there is no noise in this case. And actually, this is consistent with what we have mentioned before. If we have a lossy uh, network, uh, such as an attenuator, uh, the noise figure equal the value of the attenuation directly. So the noise figure equals the value of L. So if the value of L uh, in dB is zero. In this case, the noise figure is uh, zero in dB. Or as a ratio, if the uh, attenuation coefficient is unity, uh, the noise figure it would be unity, and it means that there is no additional noise in uh, this network because there is no losses in this case. Uh, so the value of the equivalent temperature for the general case of mismatched lossy transmission line is given by L minus 1 multiplied by L plus gamma source squared over L multiplied by 1 minus gamma source squared multiplied by uh, the temperature of the circuit and this value is actually greater than L minus 1 multiplied by T so the equivalent noise temperature for mismatched lossy line is greater than the equivalent noise temperature for matching lossy line. This means that the mismatch will introduce more and more noise in the circuit. Uh, physically, this can be explained as follows. Uh, this lossy uh, line actually generates uh, low, uh, noise in both directions, in the direction of port 1 and in direction of port 2. So, if board 1 is matched, 
the noise coming to port one will be absorbed by the matching door and it will not be reflected back once again to port two. But if it is not matching, uh, the noise power uh, which is propagating toward port one it will be partially reflected from the mismatching uh, generator or the mismatching load in port one. And this reflected noise will move back to the port 2. So it will increase the noise at port 2. So the mismatch will increase the noise at the port 2. That's what we are seeing here. The Lucy line actually delivers noise power in both its ports. So effectively, it delivers power to port 1 and delivers power to port 2. Uh, when the input power uh, sorry, when the input board is mismatched, when the input board is mismatched, some of the available noise power at board 1 is reflected from the source back to board 1 and appears once again in board 2. Uh, when the generator is matched to board 1, none of the available power from board 1 of the noise power is reflected back to the line, so the noise power available to board 2 in this case, it would be minimal. It would be the only power or the only noise power moving toward port. Uh, actually, this result implies that matching is very important to minimize the noise temperature and the noise figure for any circuit. So, when you are going to design a low noise amplifier, it is very important that the input board and output board should be matched as much as possible. Uh, this was an example for a mismatched lossy line, how to calculate the noise figure for mismatched lossy line. Uh, in the following video, we are going to present another example for a lossy network. So we are going to discuss the noise figure for a, uh, a lossy Wilkinson bar divider. Uh, so we are going to discuss the Wilkinson bar divider as a lossy network, and we will see what will be the noise figure for uh, this network. Okay. Oh.